Good day, Grade 9 uh, parents and, more importantly, Grade 9 students. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our subject choice presentation. And obviously things are being done very differently this year um, because we do want to reach you in terms of this important topic. And ordinarily we would have a, an, an interactive evening. So uh, thank you for watching this. My message to the parents in particular this evening uh, is that we need to be careful that we don't project our ambitions onto our children in terms of the careers that they may or may not want to choose. I think that that's important. The world is such a different place from when you and I were at school. When you and I were at school, it was really quite easy. You did um, maths on the high grade and anything that you did on the standard grade would count for Technicon instead of university. As we know now, there are so many options out there for our young people. And I would like to draw your attention to what I think the most critical aspects of development are for our grade nines. Firstly, emotional intelligence. Real success is going to come from the capacity of our young people to be able to play to their strengths. And as we know, we all have different strengths and opportunities to grow. So a career should really be built around one's strengths and the opportunities that that will create. The second aspect that I want to point out to you is that there are a number of careers that don't exist yet. And how do we prepare for those? What we need to do in that context is we need to develop entrepreneurial skills, we need to develop communicative skills, and as I said, the ability to read people. Those things are so important. The other thing that I want to say is that while it is so important that you make the correct choice now, we at the college do make limited provision for changes to be made after this. And therefore, I want to encourage you, if you are not 100% certain, to make the choices, but don't worry if you need to change a little bit later. The other thing that I want to point out is that the careers that we prepared for when we were growing up, um, such as um, chartered accountancy, being a doctor, those careers are not necessarily the ones that society um, is going to require moving into the future. So thank you for watching the presentation. I would like to congratulate and thank the staff in terms of their efforts of putting this together. And I sincerely hope that you find this an informative process. Please at all times refer to the booklets that have been prepared for you. And if necessary, we would welcome interaction with you either through visitation to the school, if that's permitted, or through the online process. Thank you very much and good luck with your important decisions. Good day ladies and gentlemen, Grade 9 parents and students, and welcome to our Subject Choice Showcase for 2021, Grade 10. This is somewhat different from what we usually do, but as we all know, COVID-19 protocols have, had, have made us change a number of things, but we're thrilled that you are with us today, and we trust that this is going to be a, a very informative session for you as you make decisions concerning which subjects um, you will be taking to further your studies. You'll be receiving a lot of information um, during this presentation, and that is why we've sent out the subject choice booklet um, by email and you should have all received that so that you can use that information in conjunction with our showcase. Um, we will be discussing quite a lot about the various subjects and then at the end of our showcase we will also be having some presentations from the elective subjects that will give you some more idea of what you are in for. As we discuss the subject choice today I really encourage you as parents to assist your children in making the decisions that are best for them. They have got their dreams, they've got their aspirations, just as you have. And when we encourage you to assist them in um, making these choices, we encourage you to look at them as individuals 
and what is best for each one of them for their future paths. As you all will be aware, Dane Fern College is a very holistic approach to education and your children will have already experienced many aspects of that from a cultural, academic, outreach, sporting point of view. Sadly, as we all know, in the last few months, many of those things have taken on a different face because of COVID, but nevertheless, they have still been able to take part in many different spheres. Academics is one of those spheres, and we know that the world is changing so much and no longer are we just equipping children to have good marks that will get them into varsity and then into jobs. We know that it is about so much more than that and it's about skills that they've learned as well and character traits. And so at Danfern College we do attempt to inculcate all of that into our academics as well. Right, choosing subjects is certainly not a one event type of situation but it is a process. And the Grade 9 students have been discussing these subjects in life orientation. They have recently worked on a task that will have really prepared them for the decisions that they have to make as well. They've been looking at careers and what subjects are necessary for those careers, what skills are necessary. And that has given them the opportunity to go into the broadest sphere and not just look at which subject am I going to do, but what is the long term benefit of these subjects. The Grade Nines have also completed the online aptitude and career guidance tests and you would have got that feedback back straight away after they completed that. And after this presentation, we encourage you to take some time, use the information you've gleaned from this showcase as well as the information booklet and to sit down together, parents and children, and have a look at what subjects are best for you. So take your time and make a very informed decision. You will need to confirm your subject choice by Thursday, the 3rd of September, when we come back next term, and we will give you more details about that. As you will be very aware, Danfern College has two streams of assessment from Grade 11. So we have the IEV, or the Independent Examinations Board, and then Cambridge Studies. And students up until grade 10 are enrolled in the IEB assessment stream and then they make that decision. So when we are talking about subjects today, we are talking about those that will be chosen for the IEB assessment stream. However, if students are considering taking Cambridge studies for grade 11 and grade 12 for the AS and A levels, they need to also be very careful and make sure that they take subjects which will give them entrance into Cambridge studies. And so we will look at that a bit more today as well. So in our school we have an academic structure and grade 7 to grade 9 is known as the senior phase. And so that is where our students are all at now and completing their senior phase and the subjects that they choose now are giving them entrance into what is known as the FET phase, further education and training phase. And this is where your students will now be choosing the subjects for the grade 10 year of the FET. Students will be required this time next year in grade 10 to indicate if they're going to go to Cambridge or if they're going to stay with the FET um, stage of the IEB. In South Africa, students who write the IEB exams will gain a national senior certificate at the end of their grade 12 year. Students who follow the Cambridge stream will then get their AS level and then their A level at the end of the matric year. So what is required for your students in order to take the, to, to, in order to complete the FET um, phase? In grade 10, all students are required to take seven subjects. So the first subject is English home language because that is our language of learning and teaching at Danfern College. And then they are required to take a first additional language, which they have done in grade 8 and 9 anyway, um, at Danfern College, that's Afrikaans or Isi Zulu. The only exception for that is if a student is registered as an immigrant. Now there are very specific criteria that need to be completed before a student can um, be an immigrant, as a registered immigrant, um, and be exempt from doing the second language or the first additional language as it is known 
Um, in those cases, students will take an additional subject and most often it's business studies, but it's not only limited to business studies. The third compulsory subject is mathematics and students can choose between core mathematics and mathematical literacy and then all students are required to take life orientation. After that there are three elective subjects that can be taken and this is where your subject choice comes in. Now we know that these are very big decisions that have to be taken and although we really encourage you to make an informed and specific subject choice. It does sometimes become apparent that students have made a choice that is not necessarily ideal for them. Sometimes this is because they do not really understand the full extent of the subject or perhaps they have decided on a different career path. So we are able to make subject changes, however it's not done lightly. Um, it is encouraged that all subject changes take place in grade 10, but students do need to know that if they make a a change at the end of grade 10 or in the first term of grade 11, which is the latest they can do so, that they will have to still show that they have caught up that work from the grade 10 year. So if a child in term 3 decides to change from physical sciences to business studies, for example, they need to have caught up that work. So it's not a matter of just taking one subject, swapping it and starting afresh. The requirement is that all of the subject material for grade 10, 11 and 12 is completed if you are even changing subjects. Right and obviously when we are looking at subject choice we are looking at this because you need to have the best opportunities possible for your tertiary education. So students who follow the IEB stream um, will have certain requirements in order to get into universities in South Africa and then those who follow the Cambridge stream have other requirements. But as we're focusing on grade 10 today, which is for all um, students the IEB stream, we are just going to look at some of those requirements. So in addition to having a degree pass with um, the National Senior Certificate, universities have their own requirements and this is really important for you to understand. You may be required to write a national benchmark test known as NBTs. Um, you may have heard discussions this year, a lot of the universities have actually cancelled them for this year due to the whole COVID situation. Um, some universities are still requiring the students to write them. But by the time you get to write yours um, and you apply for university when you are in 2022, we really trust that everything will be back to normal and you will most probably be required to write your NBTs. Some university applications also require other added value and this will be ranging from social responsibility to leadership to sports and this is particularly pertinent where there are limited entry faculties um, for example if you're wanting to get into the medical field or into some other limited courses. So you may have heard of the term APS. Some people talk about the APS score, but it actually is the admissions point score. And the universities take this and they base it either on a score that they have come up with particularly um, with code results or on the marks that you actually get at school. And so it's very important for you when you are looking at subject choice to also see how different subjects can affect your APS. So some universities will give you double points for relevant subjects um, and other universities will give you half points for certain subjects. So it is very, really is very, very important that you go and do the research about the relevant university so that you know which APS you are looking at. Even as I was preparing for today, um, for example, I was looking at the University of Pretoria and the Faculty of Law and I found that the entrance APS has changed by two points. So it is very important to check that. So each subject will be allocated a number of points or a score. Those add up and when you come to actually apply for university, not only do you need your degree pass, but you need to meet that APS as well. One of the subjects that often comes into debate when you look at your APS is core maths versus mathematical literacy. Now this is a debate that has been going on for a number of years. Maths literacy has been offered now for 13 years 
and it really is a subject that has been seen to have integrity and academic rigor and has been accepted more and more. And in fact, there are certain um, health sciences courses that accept a high mark in mass literacy as part of the APS. In the booklet that we've provided for you, there's a link which will give you um, information on numerous careers that you can do, even if you take mass literacy as opposed to core maths. So when should you take core maths and when should you take mass literacy? If you are looking at going into the general medical sphere and health sciences, um, often you are required to have core mathematics. As I say, there are one or two courses now that will take maths lit, but most of them require core mathematics. If you are looking at engineering degrees or science degrees and some commerce degrees, you will need to have core maths. However, for more of the humanities, you are not required to have core maths and maths literacy will suffice as long as you have a good mark for your maths literacy. So if you are looking at journalism, law, psychology, um, some teaching degrees, you will be able to take maths lit and not have to take core maths. But now what you do need to remember is that sometimes a poor core maths result will disadvantage you more than a better maths literacy result. And this is exactly um, what we see when we look at the University of Pretoria. You will see that if you have got a mark of less than 50%, you would get three points for maths. But if you have a mark of 80% for mathematical literacy, you would receive seven points. And so when you balance them up, it would actually be better for you to have a really good maths literacy mark than a poor core maths mark. So that does need to be taken into consideration when you are deciding whether to do maths or maths lit literacy. So, as you make your decisions, ladies and gents, I really think that there are three things that you need to consider very carefully. And the first one is, what are you passionate about? Remember that the subject that you choose, you're going to sit in classes for that a particular subject every day for the next three years of your schooling career and then as you go into tertiary studies as well you will be using that subject again. If you have a particular interest and in something that you're really passionate about it would be good to take a subject that follows that passion. So grade nines when you did your online assessment um, you will have received information about your particular interests and relating to subject choice. So if you are able to take something that you're passionate about, that would be your first direction to go in. Secondly, you need to look and see which subjects will open doors for you. Many of you won't know exactly what you're wanting to do when you leave school. And if you have an open door in terms of not limiting yourself because of subjects that you haven't taken at school, that will be an advantage in the future. So if you are thinking of anything in the built environment, in the engineering world, in the health science or the sciences, we would encourage you to take core maths and physical sciences because that will then open up doors in the, those directions for you. Also, if you are planning to study in the US, you need to take a humanities subject, so history or geography. And of course, if you want to follow the Cambridge stream, you need to make sure that the subjects that you take in grade 10 give you entry into Cambridge as well. And then the third aspect that you really need to look at is how well do you do in a subject? So you may decide that you want to have an open door waiting for you and therefore you're going to take subjects that will open the doors. However, you may find that you struggle in those subjects and then that will actually be more of a disadvantage to you. Remember we said you don't just need a degree pass to get into university. You need your APS to be high enough as well. So if you're taking a subject just because you want to have that option of getting into university, that may not necessarily get you in if you are not getting good enough results. So it's time for you to make decisions. And I know these decisions are not easy, but I really trust that with all the information that you receive, that you will be able to make a good decision. In terms of the Cambridge studies, as you will all be aware, we had our inaugural year of Cambridge students last year in 2019. 
and at the end of this year, in just a short while, we will have three students will be completing their A levels and then seven students will complete their AS this year. As a grade nine, you need to be very careful if you're wanting to go into Cambridge that you consider the correct subjects. And so now we're going to just have a look at what you need if you're going to follow the Cambridge stream. So we have said you have to take either core maths or maths literacy and then there's also the option of taking advanced program mathematics. Now it's very important to remember that maths literacy is a subject that stands on its own. It is not just maths at a lower level. I know when I went to school many, many years ago we had higher grade and standard grade maths. And sometimes people still think of maths literacy as standard grade maths. It actually isn't like that at all. It is a completely different subject. So just as you would see accounting and business studies as different subjects, both parts of the umbrella of economics, they are different subjects in the same way core maths and maths literacy are different subjects. So what do you need to consider when you decide which one to take? You need to have a look first of all at how you're doing at maths in grade 9. If you are coping really well with maths, we would suggest that you continue with core maths. If you are finding that core maths is really difficult for you, we would suggest that you rather take maths literacy as you would then be able to spend more time focusing on your other subjects as well. However, if you for example want to take physical sciences, you need to have core maths. You need to ask yourself, are you interested in accounting, IT and EGD for grade 10, 11 and 12? If you're wanting to take accounting and IT, you definitely have to have core maths. If you're wanting to take EGD, it is recommended that you take core maths. Historically, we've seen that students who take maths, core maths are able to cope better with EGD, but there is a little bit of room for discussion there. If you in, are interested in following the Cambridge stream, you have to take core maths. There's no maths literacy offered there. Then you need to think about what are you willing, what are you wanting to do after school? Does it require your degree to have core maths? You need to ask yourself how hard you are prepared to work and what your extramural load is. If you are a child who really wants to do core maths, but it is quite difficult for you, you are welcome to take it, but you will need to make sure that you're able to put in the number of hours for maths. We know that core maths and maths literacy require a lot of work, but if you take core maths, you're going to have to do your mathematical homework every single day. 
And then there's advanced program maths. Okay, so this is not a prerequisite for studying in engineering, technology, or the sciences, but it does certainly advance your mathematical creativity and logical reasoning. And as we said earlier, skills are so important. So for example, if you are going into engineering, it's not a prerequisite, but it will assist you, particularly in your first year, if you have taken advanced program maths. AP Best does present a very challenging learning experience and the students who do it find that they really need to put in a lot of effort. You do need to have at least 70% at the end of grade 9 in order to take AP Maths and we can accommodate approximately 25 students for AP. If you take AP, you are in a normal core maths class and then you have two lessons that are scheduled um, during the course of the week and they are timetabled for AP maths. But there is also a lot of self-study that is required. So if you're going to take AP maths, and I really encourage you to, if that is what you desire to do, just remember that you are going to have to do a lot of self-study as well for that. So, you're all going to do English, you're all going to do LO, you're all going to choose between core maths and maths literacy. And then which other subjects are on offer. I think that by now you are familiar with the subjects that Dane Fern College offers, but I will run through them quickly. In the economics we've got accounting and business studies, then we have geography and history, engineering, graphics and design, IT, life sciences, physical sciences, and then dramatic arts, music, and visual arts. And then the additional subjects, AP Maths, and you're also able to take dramatic arts or music as an additional subject. Please remember that we will do our best to accommodate all students' requests, but if there's not sufficient demand for a particular subject, then that subject may not be offered in 2021. So as you now come to choose your subjects, um, you will remember that there are five groups and you need to choose one subject from each of those groups. And when you make your choice, please be very careful to make sure that if you are wanting to take one of the electives that needs core maths, that you take core maths first and then take choose your others. So just a reminder, accounting, physical sciences, IT you need to have core mathematics. For EGD, it's a recommendation that you have core mathematics as well. Other than your five subjects that you're going to choose, you will all do English and then life orientation. Once you have made your decision and made your choice, um, the information will then guide us in allocating you to a link for each subject that you are going to take. Please just know that if there's not sufficient demand for a subject, or if there are different combinations that will affect the links that you are in. So you will not be in a link based on which group you choose, but rather in, based on the demand that there is from students for that particular subject. You will have received the link for the form that you're going to complete your choice on. It is an online Google form and that link is available in the information booklet as well as it did come out with the email when we told you about this evening and sent out the booklet. So if you please can go through all the information that you've had, spend time discussing it and then fill in that form. That please must be completed by Thursday, the 3rd of September, so that we have time to do all the allocations for next year. So we've given you lots of information today. There's lots of information in the booklet. However, if there's still something that you're unsure about, please feel free to send an email to myself or to one of the heads of subject. All our details are in the booklet. And if you need more than just an email with a, a short answer, if you'd like to have a discussion with us, we will be available to set up a Google Meet tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday before school closes so that we can answer your questions. So please send me an email tonight or tomorrow morning if you would require a Google Meet so that we can set that up and answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining us for our Subject Choice Showcase. Something very different, but we trust that it's been informative for you and you have all the information that you need. We look forward to seeing your subject choices and walking through the rest of your high school career with you at Danford.
like music as a subject because it's one of the only subjects that actually allows you to express your feelings and emotions through what you do. My favorite part about music is learning how music progressed through the times and was a reflection of both historical events and people. I really enjoy music because all the things that we learn during music are really extremely fun and entertaining as well. Okay, so how about this? 1993, Kevin Carter took a photograph of a young girl being followed by a vulture. This is a South African photographer to capture, who went across the Sudan to capture the humanitarian crisis unfolding there. And this won him a Pulitzer Prize. My question is, what do you do? And the biggest danger is that you try and answer that question. As I said, your job is to ask questions. You cannot answer the question without more questions. What have you got for me in the Southeast Asia issue? Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to think outside the box. Then we're going to push the envelope. Push the envelope. Then we take it to the next level. Hit the ground running. Think big. Start small. Raise the bar. And last but not least, we're going to put a stake in the ground. A stake in the ground. We're going to push the peanut in a new direction. The opposite of where it was going. It's new.
Science is about knowing what's going on around us without actually seeing it. Kind of like a map. With a map you can make shortcuts in your trip, but with, a, with science you can make shortcuts in your life. I like science because it explains the little things that we see every day in everyday life. There's so much more that happens behind the scenes. So learning about that is extremely interesting. It teaches us about everything around us and how the world works. And it's interesting to see how everything fits in together and creates this beautiful world of ours. The benefits of taking physics and chemistry is that they open up so many more doors for you when you leave high school. Some of the concepts that you cover in physics are also covered in maths, and so you're improving in your maths at the same time. What I enjoy most about the subject is that it's always pushing me to work hard and improve on my skills. Bright, passionately curious, fun, hungry for knowledge, a catalyst for change, problem solver. The torch of humanity is being passed down to you. Will you take it? Science is the poetry of reality. We live and breathe it every day. So what greater pursuit could there be than striving to understand the world around us?